Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, pharmacist, Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to The Bright Side every day. You are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable. And you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side to help clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to our conversation, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about skin health, skin health products, ingredients, or formulations, or anything uh, to do with health, really, particularly if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We want to help you change your life today. Today, if you're on a prescription drug and someone told you you're going to be on that drug for the rest of your life, please let us help you. There's no such thing as a drug you need to be on for the rest of your life, with the exception, perhaps, of a kidney transplant or an immune-suppressing drug if, you had, if, if you've had a transplant. But for chronic degenerative, long-term progressive diseases that simply tumble out of control and get worse and worse over time, there is no prescription drug that is going to make you better. There is no prescription drug that is not going to cost you nutrients, cost you nutrition. There's no prescription drug that's ultimately not going to cost you your health. I'm telling you this as a registered pharmacist and somebody who studied medicine now for 32 years. Not the art of medicine, but real medicine, pharmaceutical medicine. You cannot stay on a prescription drug and expect to be better for it. You cannot stay on a prescription drug and not expect to be worse for it. That's why I say, if you are on a prescription drug, your number one health challenge or health goal should be to get yourself off of it, and we can do that. And plus, give you a nutritional strategy, a nutritional program that you can use to really get better. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to learn more about our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, please go to truthtreatments.com. None of my Truth products have any filler, wax, water, emulsifier, preservative, fragrance, silicon, emulsifier, just active and functional ingredients. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. You shouldn't have to pay for anything your skin isn't going to use. 90% of most skincare products is stuff you don't need. And much of a skincare product, particularly the, the uh, uh, preservative and the fragrances, are things that your skin doesn't want. I often wonder how much of uh, skin cancer or ill health, poor health, or, or, or any, kind of, any kind of health challenge that we're dealing with it has to do with our exposure to chemicals like preservatives in skin care. You can't just rub a preservative on your skin and expect that eventually it's not going to do some damage. A preservative is a, a cell killer. That's how it works. It kills cells. Parabens and imid azolidinyl urea and diazolidinyl urea and iodopropanyl butyl carbamate, these things that kill bacteria and funguses, kill cells. And you don't want them on your skin. And you don't have to have them on your skin if you use our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com. If you want to check out our bone broth protein, go to brightsidehealth.com. Bone broth protein is rich in hyaluronic acid and glucosamine and chondroitin. Very important for joint health. Helps you balance out uh, meat protein, ordinary types of uh, animal protein with uh, cartilage protein. 
These are different kinds of protein and the balance is very important. If you're trying to get your protein only from meat or from flesh foods or from dairy, you're going to miss out on proteins that are important for building connective tissue. You'll find those in bone broth protein. You can find out about our bone broth protein on uh, brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. All right, back to our discussion on the eat fat, get skinny diet. I love that, eat fat, get skinny. Call it the ketogenic diet, the cool the body down diet, cool the brain down diet. The body likes to run cool like any machine, like your computer. It wants to run cool. If you have a brain injury or brain trauma, they're going to put your brain on ice. They'll cool you down. Movie stars today are doing cooling down uh, therapies where they cool their body down in a cool chamber. It's an anti-aging strategy to cool the body down. The ketogenic diet is a biochemical way of cooling the body down. It's a high performance diet. It's an athlete, athlete friendly diet. It's a diabetes diet or anti-diabetes diet. And it is the finest brain health diet there is. The ketogenic diet generates high energy compounds called ketones, ketogenic. Ketones are fat derivatives. Any fats are going to help the body generate ketones, particularly fats called MCTs, which you don't hear a lot about unless you listen to this program. Medium chain fats or medium chain triglycerides, technically. They're not small, they're not large, they're medium. You have three sizes of fats, and these are the medium ones. You got small, medium, and large. MCTs are the medium ones, which uh, the MCTs, like ketones, are sources of energy. And they help the body make ketones. MCTs are available in liquid form at health food stores. We used to use them back in the 80s and 90s when I was a bodybuilder. They were a great way to gain, to get energy without gaining weight or without getting fat. MCTs are used right away. We didn't know it at the time, but we were probably generating ketones. MCTs are found in dairy, found in palm oil, and they're especially found in one of my favorite oils, which is coconut oil. No, I have to say it is my favorite oil, coconut oil. Just the taste alone makes it, makes it awesome, but uh, if you add to the taste the fact that there's all of this incredible nutritional value to coconut oil, it's just amazing stuff. And yes, I know about all the negative stuff about coconut or about oils. Coconut oil is a stable oil, so you don't have to worry about uh, respecting it as much as you do the vegetable oils, the unsaturated oils. It's, there's really very little, in my opinion, there's very little downside to coconut oil. There's certainly a lot of upside, especially for the brain. It's because of the MCTs and it's because of the ketones. The MCTs and the ketones are incredibly important for the brain. This is why there's so much news, uh, and there's so much literature and there's so much uh, information on the internet and the news about coconut oil and Alzheimer's disease. Coconut oil helps the body generate ketones. Ketones are important for brain health all brain health issues, including Alzheimer's disease. Remember, the ketogenic diet started as a brain health diet for seizure disorders. Coconut oil is highly ketogenic. It's a great source of MCTs. It's probably nature. I, I can't think of a better food source of MCTs. There may be one, but I think it, I'm pretty sure coconut oil is the number one best source of MCTs. The, co, the uh, MCT liquid that you get in, uh, in uh, health food stores is actually MCTs. I use MCTs in skincare. MCTs have an ability to deliver new uh, active ingredients through the skin. In the world of skincare, uh, you know, if you, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I talk about this all the time. But in the world of skincare, it's what gets absorbed through the skin that really counts. Just like when you eat something, it's what gets absorbed that really counts. In terms of skincare, when you use a skincare product, most skincare products sit on the top of your skin. The top of your skin is made up of dead cells. This is, nothing highlights the ineffectiveness, the really ignorance of, of uh, biochemical or biological ignorance of trying to use a skincare product or trying to sell a skincare product or trying to convince somebody to use or, sell or buy a skincare product. This, this is supposed to do something for the, for the skin when it's just gonna sit on the top of the, on the surface. This is crazy. The action in the skin is underneath. The surface of the skin is dead. You put your skincare product on your surface of your skin and you get nice, soft, dead skin. Congratulations. This is where transdermal penetration is so important. And MCTs in skincare products can help drive active material to the lower levels of the skin. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right.
right, we're back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. If you want to purchase any of the longevity, longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can get products right off the website. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team. If you like this kind of stuff and you want to share the information and you want to make some money at the same time and you want to help change lives, you want to join my team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a business, you can get your products at the wholesale price, and you can help spread the word, and you can help change lives like we do here every day on the Bright Side. Call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Bright Side Ben team. They can give you the full scoop, 866-735-2470. From the journal Prostaglandins, Leukotrienes, and Essential Fatty Acids, these are all molecules of inflammation. Metabolism breakdown of polyunsaturated fatty acids and ketogenesis, an emerging connection. You don't necessarily necessarily need to have coconut oil to generate ketones. You can generate ketones from any oil. You can generate ketones from unsaturated, polyunsaturated oils, the kind of oils that, that we hear so much negative stuff about. Now, I, I, uh, you know, I understand you gotta respect the oil. I'm not saying you can go crazy on your oils. However, there are wonderful benefits by, for, from these polyunsaturated fats, like with all fats. According to this article, PUFAs, P-U-F-A's, polyunsaturated fats, vegetable oil fats, basically, have anti-seizure benefits. And they're ketogenic. This is from, uh, from March 2004. I personally am a big fan of coconut oil, as you know. Coconut oil for Alzheimer's, coconut oil for performance, coconut oil for weight loss. Coconut oil is one of those, it's one of the, you know, if you read, when you get on the internet and you read all the articles about coconut oil, it almost seems like a fad. It can't be true that you can have one food that's tasty and uh, good for your brain, it'll help you lose weight, help you have energy, great for diabetes. It's just hard to believe. You think it's like a fad, but it's not when you understand the biochemistry. Apple cider vinegar is much the same way. If you get on the internet and read up about apple cider vinegar, it's going to seem like it's a fad. It can't be that one food has all of these benefits. Well, like MCT's apple cider vinegar it has unbelievable benefits that are easy to understand once you understand the chemistry. Apple cider vinegar, well, MCT, uh, coconut oil contains MCTs. That's the secret to the power of coconut oil. And apple cider vinegar contains something called acetate or acetic acid, which is similar to uh, an MCT. It is. A, it's a short chain fatty acid, an S SCT, not an MCT. It's an SCT, but it has the same kind of benefits or some similar benefits. There's a lot of similarities in the chemistry, the fat chemistry, I should say, of coconut oil and apple cider vinegar, and both have a reputation for being panaceas. And that's because these short chain and medium chain fats are panaceas. That is so important. These medium chain fats and short chain fats are like panaceas in the sense they're good for so many different things. Because they involve, they're involved with how the body processes, utilizes, leverages, takes advantage of, exploits energy. MCTs and short chain fats are involved with energy and whenever you hear about energy you want to think about the brain and the heart and indeed short and the digestive system and it turns out that all of these fats are important for the brain heart and the digestive system now, they don't tell you a lot about the skin you don't have a lot of there's not a lot of research about acetate and MCTs and apple cider vinegar for the skin but in my experience they're both very important for the skin especially topically Coconut oil for the skin will help drive active material in from the surface of the skin to the lower level of the skin. So mix your actives in coconut oil. That's what I do in my, uh, in my truth treatment products. My truth treatment products contain, or my retinol does, I should say, all my truth treatment products contain transdermal penetration ingredients. That is ingredients that will pull the active material through the surface of the skin. But our retinol is made with MCTs, and that gives you more retinol benefit. Our retinol 5% gel. I'm telling you, if you are interested in a topical anti-aging product, our retinol 5% gel, while slightly stimulating, 
not anywhere near as stimulating as Retin-A or, or over-the-counter cheapo retinol products that you get, which you never get 5%, by the way, in, in your retinol products over the most department store and, and, and over-the-counter retinol products. Our retinol 5%, uh, our retinol, uh, Truth Retinol Gel is made with 5% and it's made with a transdermal enhancer, which is based in coconut oil. Apple cider vinegar, the acetate in apple cider vinegar is incredibly important for brain health as well. And it's important for sugar metabolism and energy. I like doing apple cider vinegar in the middle of the day. It gives you energy in the middle of the day, especially on an empty stomach. Apple cider vinegar has got potassium, it's got calcium, it's got magnesium, it's got copper, it's got... Uh, sodium, it's got uh, mineral uh, uh, amino acids, it's got uh, vitamin C and vitamin A, it's got the B complex. I mean, this stuff's amazing. Apple cider vinegar it costs you a dollar, a dollar fifty. It is the best health tonic you'll ever use. Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar, not the distilled kind. Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar. So anyway, the ketogenic diet, high fat health diet for most of us conditioned by the low fat mainstream dietitian advice that we've been hearing for, for decades, although in fairness, not as much over the last few years, but for decades, we heard about low, you had to go low fat. We had a fear of fat. When I was growing up in the 60s or 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, there was a fear of fat. Americans, the whole fear of fat that Americans had started in the 1950s. There were studies that were starting to link heart disease with uh, ingestion of fat. There was a guy named Dr. Ansel Keys who was a, a professor at the University of Minnesota, which did a lot of grain research, by the way. I'm not sure if that's coincidental or not. And he went around and he did some studies and, and actually, he, as it turns out, he, he interpreted the data of his, of his studies incorrectly, but he came up with the idea that there was a link between eating a lot of fat and heart disease. And then you have the simplistic notion that you know, fat, is, fat on, in our food is the same as fat in our bodies. So the link between dietary fat and, and, and bodily fat kind of somehow came together. And between these two wrong ideas, that you eat a lot of fat, you get heart disease, and you eat a lot of fat, and you, you get fat, millions of Americans were on this low-fat bandwagon for decades. Even though, even though heart disease didn't really drop, and people got more and more obese, more and more overweight as they went low-fat. Nobody seemed to notice that. Our fear, our fear of fat really got going around 19, uh, somewhere in the mid-1970s when uh, the cholesterol theory of heart disease was just starting to become popular in the mainstream and people were dying at uh, really alarming rates of heart disease and heart attacks. Senator George McGovern uh, called a hearing to raise attention to this connection between fat and disease, specifically between diet and disease, and he featured in his hearing uh, conventional mainstream health geniuses like Dr. Nathan Pritikin, who gave us the Pritikin diet, which is a low calorie, low protein, low carb, high, I'm sorry, high carb diet, low fat, high carb diet. The Pritikin program says that only 10% of our daily calories should come from fat, should come from fat. That's about as anti-ketogenic, by the way, uh, as you can get. Anyway, the upshot of the hearing is we should all be eating more carbs in the form of grains and fruits and vegetables and eating a lot less fat. And almost to this day, we're still following this with this uh, conventional wisdom. I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our searchable archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting uh, benfuchsarchives.com. That's a really neat website. Peter uh, did a great job on that. All, I've got all kinds of websites uh, up, and what Peter did is he kind of co uh, consolidated them all into one site. So I've got all my, my true sites, Critical Health News and Pharmacist Ben, etc. They're all consolid consolidated at benfuchsarchives.com. There's also ar an archive there uh, that's searchable. Okay, so there's so much to talk about here, and I know I've been doing it for a while. I still want to get to CLA, which I absol absolutely love, conjugated linoleic acid, a very interesting fat. We're going to talk about that probably tomorrow. 
I uh, also want to talk about some of the other nutrients that you should use when you're on the ketogenic diet, and we'll do that tomorrow. And we'll finish up talking about this whole uh, McGovern hearing and Nathan Pritikin and the whole thing, how Americans got convinced that they got to eat less fat. We'll continue that tomorrow. From, uh, let's see here, the journal Frontiers in Cellular Neuroscience, swapping lard for fish oil benefits the brain as well as the body. How do you like that? In a study that compares the effect of different fats on the brain, unsaturated types of fats, such as fish oil, were found to have beneficial effects on brain inflammation uh, and inf uh, infer, what is it? Yeah. Brain inflammation. What am I reading here? Swapping lard for fish oil. I wonder why they say this. Further results indicated that a diet of fish oil resulted in no modification. I see. Okay. So apparently, they used to think that fish oil would, uh, would have beneficial effects on the brain. But as it turns out, lard can actually have better effects on the brain than fish oil. Lard is a saturated fat. Lard is highly ketogenic. And, uh, and actually, lard is pretty darn good stuff. As gross as it may sound, pig fat. It's actually really good when it comes to brain and heart health for that matter. How, that is so amazing to me that you can eat lard and it's actually good for your heart and good for your brain. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Let's go to, uh, do, do, do. let's go to Eugene in Oregon. Good morning, Eugene. Welcome to the Bright Side. Eugene, do we have Eugene? Eugene, Hello. Eugene. Hey, Eugene. You there? Eugene. Okay, I don't know, uh, Eugene. Eugene, I'm having a hard time hearing you, buddy. Are you there? I'm here. Okay, what's going on? Good morning. Well, I'm, I'm wondering about uh, this DHEA. All right, what are you wondering about? Well, I'm, I'm 72, and I got uh, prostate cancer, and I'm taking oh. 25 milligrams of DHEA a day. Okay. How safe that is? It's not unsafe. Uh, you got to play around with the dose a little bit. It is a hormone. It's not. It's not like a vitamin or a mineral, and that's probably what you're alluding to. I wouldn't say it's unsafe. The body has many protective mechanisms for making sure DHA doesn't get turned into anything bad. DHA in itself is not bad. The problem with DHA is it gets converted. It gets transferred. Uh, it gets transformed into testosterone and ultimately to estrogen. And so that's why you'll hear sometimes people saying, well, you got to be careful with DHA. You probably do have to be careful with it. I don't know that I would be too concerned. You got way bigger fish to fry if you've got prostate problems, prostate cancer. Uh, you should be way more concerned about the kind of fats you're eating. You should be way more concerned about the kind of nutrients you're taking, particularly nutrients that help support the hormone system like zinc, vitamin E. Vitamin E is one of the all-time great fat-protecting vitamins, and vitamin E is uh, the prostate's a fatty gland, and anything you do to protect your fats or eat correct fats is going to help the prostate. So, I, I mean, DHEA, yes, it's true. It can con get converted into hormones, and you don't want to mess around with your hormones if you've got prostate cancer, but you've got way more important things to concern yourself about. If you really want to you really be careful, drop your dose on the DHEA. Are you noticing any, any uh, benefits from it? That's the question, Eugene. Oh, yeah, yeah. If I don't take it, I'd be, I'd be in, in pain. I mean, the I DHEA helps you with pain? Well, it's kind of an allergy thing, I think. I'm not sure how that would work. Are you noticing that you have more virility or more energy or you're healing faster, more strength, more yeah. sexual yeah. libido kinds yeah. of things? Yeah. Are you yeah, noticing I that? I feel better when I'm taking the DHA. If I don't take that DHA, yeah. I wouldn't feel good. My opinion is stay on. I don't think you, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, you got more what important things to worry about. It? What about offsetting any uh, potential problems with uh, a product called DIM, which is a Yes, I know about DIM. You want to hear a funny story about DIM? The guy who invented DIM, or who, who actually brought it to market, is a, a, he's an anesthesiologist here in Boulder, Colorado. 
and he's actually a friend of mine. And when DIM first came out, I was one of the first guys to start working with it. DIM stands for diindoleomethane, and it's a it's a, 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 a chemical that's found in broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables. And this guy, his name is Zelig, uh, came up with it, and he started marketing it. This was probably in the 90s. And I was one of the first guys to start working with it. I had a whole bunch of it in my fridge for a while. Was, he wanted to do skincare with it, and it never happened. But uh, it should, and DIM is good stuff. DIM is an anti-estrogen, is what it is. So it may help you. It may, and, and if you have a prostate problem, it may help you with that. And it's just not a bad idea to do it. But I, even better than DIM, you can also do lots of broccoli and lots of cru- uh, cruciferous vegetables. DIM is yeah, one I of the fra- well, yeah. DIM is one of the fractions in cruciferous vegetables, as is something called I3C. I don't know if you've heard of that one, indoleal 3 carbonyl I3C is like DIM. It's an anti-estrogen. And so for women who are on uh, tamoxifen, you can use the DIM and you can use the I3C, if not instead of uh, the tamoxifen, to lower your dose on tamoxifen. And for anybody who wants to control the effects of estrogen, which is a stress hormone, as we've said so many times, an inflammatory hormone, uh, using DIM and I3C can be helpful. Say if you, have, if you have Alzheimer's disease, which is associated with estrogen, or if you have autoimmune disease, which is associated with estrogen, uh, DIM and I3C may be helpful there too. I don't know necessarily what would help you with the DHA, but it sounds like you're doing great, Eugene. Okay. All right, man? Good. All right. Thank take, you very much. Have a great day. Take care. All right. Let's go to Karen in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Karen. Hi. Good morning, Ben. Hey. Hi. Nice to talk with you. Say, I wanted to ask you, my son uh, went to the dermatologist this week, and he's been prescribed... Accutane, which I took literally 50, 49 or 50 years ago. Are you serious? You uh, took it that long ago? I did. It's literally uh, 50 I'm years 57 ago? 57, and I, was, I took it back when I was about 17. I didn't know. I didn't realize. Oh, so 40 years. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, well, I thought it came, out in the, okay. yeah, it came out in the 80s. My math is bad. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It came out in the late 70s, I think, or somewhere in there. Right. So what's your, and, what's your uh, question? Well, uh, I wonder how safe it is. You know, his acne is not near it's, as, nearly as it's bad. It's an as awful mine, way to treat. It's an awful way. It's a lazy way. It's an ignorant way to treat acne. Unless you're, you know, I don't, it, it can work. So if somebody's that is totally desperate, nothing's working, they've got really severe condition, then I can see why people would take it. But really, there's much better solutions. Much better solutions. It represents a lack of understanding on the part of dermatologists of how chemistry works. And this, it really highlights the difference between a clinician and a chemist, which we talk about a lot on this program. Clinicians do work with, in the clinic, they work with the, the signs and the symptoms, and they try to control the signs and the symptoms. A chemist understands the pathways. Hang on, Karen. I'll finish up when we come back from our okay, break. Okay, thank you. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Karen in Texas about Accutane. Karen, you there? Yes, and you know, another thing about the prescription is they, I sent him in to pick it up, and it was $710. So That's absurd. That's left. absurd. <laughs> you want to know how much this stuff really costs to make? It's like less than a dime. That's Can you imagine transferring a, trans, turning a dime into $700 with that? Uh, uh, it's I'm ungodly. I need to be in the Accutane making business. Maybe the drug business, you know. And by the way, the pharmacist isn't the guy making the money. It's the drug companies making the money on all this. Don't blame your pharmacist. Uh, here's here's the here's the deal with Accutane. First of all, Accutane is fake vitamin A. Vitamin A is an is a really fascinating vitamin. It's very important for the skin. It helps cells divide at a certain clip, at a normal clip, a normal rate. And vitamin A also controls the flow of sebum to and secretions in general. And so when, uh, when you take Accutane, what you're doing is you're tricking the body into thinking you're taking vitamin A, but you're not. It looks almost exactly like vitamin A with just a slight tweak. So the cell gets tricked into taking in the Accutane as if it were vitamin A. But because it's not vitamin A, all the vitamin A machinery is clogged up. It's a monkey wrench. It throws a monkey wrench into the vitamin A machinery. Does that make sense how I explain that? Um. It, it, I'm not no. sure. <laughs> okay. But vitamin A is, is involved in making oil, in producing skin oils and making cells divide rapidly. That creates a pimple. Okay. Oh. So, so far, so good? Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you have, the thinking is if you shut down vitamin A, the cells won't divide and the oil won't be secreted and you won't get a pimple. 
okay? If you shut down okay. vitamin A's activity, and that's how Accutane works. It shuts down vitamin A's activity. The problem is vitamin A does a lot of things in the body. So what ends up happening is you get vitamin A deficiency side effects, including horrible, horrible dryness, dry eyes, dry throat, dry, uh, digestive problems because you don't secrete digestive juices. Everything dries up. And they haven't done any research on this, but it seems obvious that other vitamin A functions will be suppressed as well. And vitamin A is the main building vitamin, a main repair vitamin, a main growth vitamin, a main liver vitamin. Not to mention the fact that now your body has to process a drug, has to detoxify a drug. This, this is just bad, bad, bad therapy, and it highlights the difference between a clinician and a chemist. A clinician doesn't care about what's happening in, to the chemistry in the body. A clinician, which is what a doctor is, a clinician doesn't care about the effects of a drug on the body, nor does a clinician care about the chemistry behind the disease or the symptoms. He just wants to knock out the symptom, and he doesn't care what he has to do to do it. And my beef with this is the, the idea that, number one, you're not correcting the problem, and number two, now you're giving the body more work to do. You've given it a poison. So what do you do? What's the answer? Well, Accutane, or acne has a cause. It doesn't just appear. There's a cause there, right? So the idea is what, what's causing it? Acne is an inflammatory condition. That means something is getting into the body that's turning on the inflammatory system. It's hyping up the body. So for one thing, what have we been talking about here the last month? We've been talking about calming the body down with the ketogenic diet. So just put, putting one and one together, acne is a hyper condition. It's a condition where the body is going nuts. It's like cells are dividing really rapidly. Oil is being secreted in abundance. The ketogenic diet calms the body down. So put one and one together. The ketogenic diet is how you deal with acne. For that alone will make a huge difference. There's much more. Well, vitamin that'll... A, taking natural vitamin A. Absolutely. That was gonna, I was going to tell you that. But here, let me just, before I get to that, calming the body down is how you deal with acne. The ketogenic diet is your acne diet. Uh, Makes sense so far? You're calming the body yeah. down. All right? Sugar and uh, excess secretion of sebum and excess oils are a sugar issue largely, or in many ways, they're a sugar issue. And an insulin issue, the ketogenic diet will help you there. The next thing is going to be supplements. Vitamin A is, is probably the most important supplement, okay? 20,000 IU a day. Zinc is right up there. 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolane. By the way, I have an acne supplement that's going to have all the nutrients for acne, that you need for acne uh, in one pill, in one cap, okay. or three capsules that you take, three capsules a day. What's that called? It's going to be called, uh, uh, you know, I forgot the name of it. I, we changed the name <laughs> of it. Uh, blemish Repair Blemish Repair Complex is what we're calling okay. it. Blemish okay. Repair. And it'll be out on my website, truth.treatments.com. Okay. Uh, here in the next week or so. Uh, anyway, but in the meantime, vitamin A, 20,000 IU, uh, zinc picolinate, 50 milligrams a day, selenium, 200 micrograms, a, or actually more, 600 micrograms a day on your selenium. Uh, it wouldn't hurt you to take some NAC, 1,000 milligrams a day. Wouldn't hurt you to get on some chromium, 20, uh, maybe 200 to 400 milligram, micrograms a day. Um, and then well, uh, we'll something. Take all of that uh, if I can get it all in one. Get it all, yeah, to get my get my blemish repair complex. Get my retinol five percent gel as well. Look for food issues. Look for digestive health issues. Are the breakouts on the cheek? Are they on the T zone? Where are the breakouts going? Are they in the back? Uh, mostly on the cheek. The cheek is a food condition. All right. Cheek and acne. And I heard you say something about bananas yesterday, but I was I was. Sometimes bananas are a problem. He eats lots of bananas. Sometimes they're a problem. The sugar in bananas is sometimes hard to process. So yes, yeah, sometimes bananas are a problem. Look to foods. Cheek means foods. T zone is, and this is roughly because there's overlap. But roughly speaking, uh, t cheeks mean food, and T zone means male hormones. But there's overlap. But with cheeks, you definitely want to look for dairy and for grains and for uh, problem foods. Uh, high, high sugar foods can be a problem. All right, I got to motivate here, Karen. I got a bunch of calls and I don't have a lot of okay. time. I hope we okay. helped you out. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. All right, uh, let's go to Pam in California. Welcome to the Bright Side. Um, good morning. Um, good morning, Ben. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? What's going on? Well, I have a question, and I haven't been able to get an answer from anyone, and I probably don't think there is an answer. But um, you know, I I use I, I used your truth, truth products, and the and I'm I'm an older lady, you know, I'm pushing seventy, and okay. um, I saw a, a huge improvement in the quality and texture of my skin. However, from 
from pre-existing, I had pre-existing broken capillaries on my face from all, you know, 30 years of not knowing the right thing to do. Okay. A little mechanical injury if I would use a washcloth to, uh, you know, harshly, uh, they would so, break, whatever. So I know that there are lasers that will help this, but is there any other way to reduce this or the, eliminate the, the redness, the redness in there? Well, there are little capillaries. I know I, what you're talking about. That's a sign that your body's breaking down, is what you're well, witnessing. Well, I know, I know that, but I'm not you're getting also any more of them. I'm not getting any more. They're just. Well, that's good. That's awesome. I've had these for, for, for 20 years, and um, they're just in the same place. I, I, now I would be looking to other conditions. You're not going to be able to address the, the blood vessels themselves, but you'll be able to address other conditions, and that in turn will help the blood vessels. So you got to look for other symptoms, other things that are going on in your body, and you got to correct those, especially at the foundational level. It's actually a very good question. Whenever you have a, a health challenge that's secondary, which is what that is, you can't address it by simply addressing the secondary problem. You've got to go to the primary cause. And the primary cause is usually going to be in the digestive system through two directions, malabsorption of nutrition in combination with toxicity that's getting into the gut. The second primary cause is going to be the blood sugar system, and that's where you stay. Uh, that involves elevations in sugar as well as elevations in insulin. And then the third primary cause is going to be the thyroid and the, the adrenal thyroid complex, or the adrenal thyroid axis, which I call the adrenal thyroid axis, which is stress and salt balance, as well as hypothyroidism. So what you got to do is you got to first look for, this is the same thing for everybody. I'm sure you've been listening to this program, so you probably know. The same thing for everybody, Pam. You got to work on the digestive system system. You got to make sure you're getting your basic nutrients. You got to work on the blood sugar system and then uh, you calm the body down. Make sure you're getting enough salt and uh, use, uh, make sure you're doing your deep breathing techniques, oxygenation. And it's the same thing for everything, Pam. You understand what I'm saying? So you're, I, I, the, but I don't know what else to eliminate. You know, I'm 111 pounds. I'm almost has nothing to do with weight. Pounds. has nothing to do with weight, my dear. And I have cut out all grains. All no, this is how you do it. Let me tell you. Hang on. I'm going to tell you what to do here, okay? <laughs> I don't want to okay. lose any more weight. No, it doesn't matter. You don't want to care about your weight. You care about your body fat. If you have a lot of protein, a lot of muscle, that's going to give you less. You're going to end up weighing. Uh, it's going to, the muscle is really what you're looking for. You, the number is really not as relevant as the fact that you have, you have uh, lean muscle. You know what I'm saying? It's not the number of pounds that you're looking for. It's the constituency of the body. See, if you have a bunch of, if you have a bunch of body fat, uh, you may not weigh as much as you have uh, as if you have more protein, but you're going to be healthier with the more with the protein. So here's what you got to do, Pam. Get yourself a notebook and write down everything you eat, and then connect digestive symptomology to specific foods and connect other symptoms like skin symptoms to specific foods. If you have inflammatory issues, connect those to specific foods and then eliminate those foods. That's called the elimination diet. And we talk about it all the time here. If you want to call back tomorrow and we'll finish up with you, Pam. I'm sorry, we're just out of time. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for listening. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. Check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. If you want to uh, check out our bone broth, protein, go to brightsidehealth.com. And of course, I'd love to have you on the Longevity team. Call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.